Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to Kazoo Redux. I'm your host, Mr. Grain Wang Chuck Lover. But this is where we're at in August 8th, 1939. It's kind of cut into crap. The Russians have gone to war with us, and we're at war with the Entente, and the Qing government and their allies, and the Chinese and friends are at war with us. It's turned into complete crap, so basically I had to, I had to kind of balance it out a little bit more um, to the point so that we don't completely lose, because this is, this is not very good right now. I'll be honest, I'd use Khan's commands, because uh, this isn't very good. Uh, yeah. Not great. Really not great. Especially with the Entente, and then the Moscow Accord, and then the Chinese themselves want to kill us, but... <clears throat> we'll see what happens. Uh, but let's talk about a couple of focuses first, and... I probably did one of these, and I don't remember which one I did off-screen, but, regardless... I'll got, give us some comments as well. Develop Western Mongolia. Western Mongolia has seen a lot of banditry in the recent years to the detriment of the region as a whole. We need help bring industry and trade into the region if we hope that our people uh, will be able to live prosperous lives. Um, we would like to go through all this stuff too. Improve Ergo Roads. Land around Ergo is spacious and is well suited to our industrial aims, but lies barren with no way for construction materials and supplies to reach it. Expanding the road network will give us more space to build and increase our movement and speed in the region. Expand the Trans Mongolian. <clears throat> Soon after we declared independence, we created our own connection to the famed Trans Siberian Railway, the Trans Mongolian, in order to secure better trade links to the outside world. Even though it has been a huge boon to our country, it's no longer enough. It's time to take a step further and expand the railway into the rest of our territory. Develop the Tuvan region. <clears throat> During the Blue Revolution, Tuva and the West were the most sympathetic to the revolutionary cause, with rumors claiming that its leaders were hiding therein. We should develop the region in order to keep the local populace content, at least for now. Um, consumer goods will increase by 5%, establish a Campbell Deer Mines. We do not seize the lands of Tuva because they look pretty. We should expand our mines there so the thirst of a mighty war machine is stated, at least until we find new lands to conquer. Kenti seems. <clears throat> new sources of vital materials have been discovered in the mountains of Kenti, supposed the burial site or place of Genghis Khan I. We must. The capitalists and the discovery begin efforts to develop our mines there. Oh, wow. There's a lot there, too. Holy crap. There's quite a bit here. Building slots. Um, I might want to wait just a little bit first for this, so we'll do all of these. Um, and what else? <clears throat> like I said in the last video, it just makes more sense for us to go down the right path, I, I suppose, in this path. Even though I do like better art motorized of production. But these are just blueprints, so going down this way is honestly just better. We're good Ungern's guards. Ungern von Rommelstein, but is leading Mongolia out of the darkness of mediocrity and subjugation into an era of greatness. It's only fitting we outfit a guard worthy of his power and prestige. Let's combine the best cavalrymen of our nation into the cohort that Ungern von Rommelstein, but can be proud of. <clears throat> Finish recruitment of Ungern's guards. Uh, let's double the size of Great Khan's lower bodyguard and raiding force. Another two cohorts of elite cavalry shall be raised in his honor to help him terrorize his enemies. Oh, uh, that's not bad. Uh, ooh, remove Russian military aid, not to be sent alone. Another thing that will help us out immediately, help from the guard. <clears throat> The Baron's Guard already received the best training and top of the line equipment, which marked them out as the best of our, or the lead of our army. Consequently, some of our high command suggests that we cement this role by giving them the role of our officers in our Grand Army. Uh, army professionals. The training that Ungern Sternberg's guards have put the regular troops through has made them into great soldiers. Having completed this task, the guards can also be assigned as officers of our army, keeping unit cohesion and discipline and inspiring the rank and file of soldiers to fight harder and support research and institutes. Modern Mongolia is not well for known as military innovation. By investing our war booty into a sustainable system of institutes, we'll be able to ensure that our forces have kept abreast of the latest developments in scientific research from across the globe and increase military spending. In times of great strife, <clears throat> Mongolia needs to defend herself. We must therefore ensure that we increase funding for the armed forces to the point where our nation can defend herself. Better to expand capital and defense than to be left floundering when war comes. So, uh, let's get through one more day, and we'll start going down this way. Because I, yeah, the research slots are super important, but we already have four research slots. Oh, no, we have five already. Okay, so, um, we're going to keep focusing on industry here first. A couple comments, though. <clears throat> As you can see, we're slowly trying to defend here and trying to defend here as well. So we'll see what happens. Um, let's see. Someone says, looking forward to part two. Someone else says, a very interesting but kind of terrifying man, Baron Ungern Sternberg. Someone says, glad that you go back to countries where you did the other paths. Someone else says, Mr. Lover in China, may your soul rest in peace, especially when you do the Kaiser uh, Chinese Emperor. <coughs> Someone said, if you're in Mongolia during the final moments, a few seconds later after impact of the dinosaurs, you'd have a few minutes to live before you'd cook from the inside out alive. Hey, so it says, okay, uh, someone else says, hey to the Mad Baron, that man was unironically a hero, and modern Mongolia owes its existence to him. Oh, and someone else says, all anti-communists are heroes. So, someone says, they try to play EU4 as the oi, right, horde, do the same and restore the Mongols, so. And someone else has, also says, ah, the not-so-mad Baron anymore returns. Well, everyone, here we're at, August 6th, 1940, and I'd use more consequences. At this point, we can't do anything here, I mean, it just, it's... I'm not, I'm not gonna blame the devs for this one because I kind of put this in my put myself in this position, but it's not very good. It's not very fun to be honest with you. It's just been very grindy and annoying and just not fun having to delete enemy divisions just so we can do well against them because we have way too many fronts. I know I just only wanted one front against a Barty commune, and then the Antan went to war with us, and then the Chinese went to war. Actually, the Russians went to war with us first, and then the Chinese went to war with us. 
So overall, it's just not been fun. I've not enjoyed this really that much at all. Um, I don't want to have an Indian puppet, maybe though. But I did. Uh, Russian did die first, so there's that. I'm not gonna give anybody these blaze lands just yet. So yeah, and honestly, this I don't want to fight the Rikes pack. I never wanted to fight the Rikes pack. I don't know why we're at war with the Rikes pack, but it's just not. It's not fun. I I don't understand why we're at war with them. Um, they are struggling a little bit against the Reds, but it's just not fun. Just not fun. That's that's my biggest thing right now. Just not fun. I was just doing doing an army of professionals, which is fine. But I want to keep you updated on how things are going along here. Um, yeah, just not fun. Mongolia, unless you're like very very strong, it's just a god awful thing to do to fight a land war in Asia, especially against the Chinese. I mean, this is stupid. All these Chinese. I mean, how can you win here? Oh my gosh. Well, that was really dumb. So yeah, I just where this is where we're at for now. Um, just take it forever for everything. Um, other than that, not really too much else in the army. Um, we're doing army reform just because we can. Those two, because we don't have very much else to do as well. And I, I don't want to fight the Rex back. I just do not. It's a waste of time. It's a complete waste of time. There's no border between us, because Russia declared war on us. So I'll probably do Scott's commands again for them, and then we'll see what happens uh, in just a uh, oh, little bit. Wow. Don't age boon. Mediterranean Axis. Wow. Bulgarians and Italy. Well, that's definitely different. All right, everyone. So at this point, I'm I'm done with this campaign pretty much. I hate this so much because it's so grindy. Nothing's getting done. So I just use Khan's commands and Russia. I, I'm done with this. Um, this has been very just very unpleasant. But I kind of did it to myself. So, so the Bloody Baron seizes the Russian mantle after a long, arduous, and hard-fought campaign through the frozen, frozen tundra and harsh deserts, across steppe and the Great Plains of Siberia, through the Russian heartlands into the Black Heart of Moscow itself. Our armies finally stand victorious. We've lost many of our countrymen and allies along the way. We've triumphed under the leadership and guidance of Baron von Ungern Sternberg. And now, of all of Russia's our prize. The second time in history, a force is written out from the eastern steppe to conquer all of Russia. This time, it's not a mere Mongol leading the charge, but a true son of Russia himself. Now, the Baron shall rule the prize as region until an official government can be formed and the true Tsar found. In Mongolia, his old ally and friend, the Bog Khan, shall rule him instead. So, he's an ally of Sternberg's Russia while simultaneously granting the Mongolian people independence and self rule. Long live the regent, Ungern Sternberg. Well, that's nice, but I, I, this was terrible. This was one of the worst things I've ever done, just because it's so grindy, and I don't give a crap about the Reich's Pact. I don't give a crap about any of this stuff. I just want to kill China and Russia. That's all I wanted, but uh, the AI thought of something different. So I just cheated. I cheated out that butt this campaign. I cheated like crazy, so I apologize, but this has been terrible. Uh, new sources of vital materials have been discovered in the mountains of Kenti. Suppose the Bureau Place of Gang is the first course, like, like I read earlier. We must capitalize on discovery and begin efforts to develop our minds there. The fate of the Mongol lands. After Ungan's restoration of the Russian Empire, there's been a lingering question in the uh, court of the Baron, one which concerns the fate of the Mongol lands of Mongolia. Many call for his old ally and friend the Bog Khan rule instead, so if it is an ally to Sternberg's Russia while simultaneously granting the Mongolian people independence and self-rule, however, say that our stewardship of the Mongol people must continue and no less controversy surrounds the fate of the Chinese territories. Pan Mongolian state? Japanese allies make good use of the Chinese lands? Uh, firm hand, let the step peoples of prosperity and continue to do so? I'll do something else. Long live the Balkan. Let's stop. So we're the Russian Empire now. Oh. Oh, crap. Oh, we're Mongolia. Oh. Well, now we're Russia. Well, maybe that was the wrong choice. Yeah, that probably was. Alright, everyone. So, I just decided, you know what, screw it. Just stay the Russian Empire and we'll just finish off the Chinese and call it a campaign. I wish we could do more stuff, but... Uh, we'll read through a lot of focuses, we'll destroy the Chinese and restore the governments and stuff like that and call it a campaign just because I'm... Uh, you've already heard me in this episode say, I'm kind of done with this, but... Uh, though the socialist man were unable to take power months ago during the Western Revolt, they still control some small cells, primarily in the hard reach north of the nation. These cells must be completely destroyed if we are to be safe from the communist threat. Propaganda in the cities. With the cities being the only main population groups in the nation, a mass propaganda campaign should be started uh, in them. To entrench the idea that conformity to the state is required to survive, which find Romanov. And that's good to be Catherine break. All is fair and fine for the peasant villagers who spent their days commuting in to and fro the, from the fields from their, uh, in their homes. Today, however, was different. <clears throat> Flocks of soldiers ran around bearing shovels instead of guns, and a dozen or so piles of snow and dirt surrounded the village. It was a division sent out by the baron turned warlord turned region of Russia, Roman Sternberg. It was only on a whim of a rumor that Sternberg had heard from his officers, an elderly woman, cloaked in a mystic black robe, proclaiming in Catherine break that she knew where the dear old Grand Duke, uh, Michael Romanov, was buried. There was nothing to attest that her ramblings were true, yet there was nothing that disproved them either in the eyes of the regent, even if he was dared to believe that the man he was searching for was all dead all along. You idiots, idiots! 
You were from dawn to dusk in the snow for a man in heck. It don't take long afterwards for the entire division to disperse with a sour look on every man's face. As for the old trickster, her joke would pay her, uh, would pay her the ultimate price. But at least it would give one of the multiple hovels surrounding the village a purpose. Never speak of this again. Oh boy. Oh, but yeah. Uh, it's just been not fun. It's just not fun. First of all, fighting landlord Asia sucks. The trick is to get a bunch of air superiority, which we do have a few planes. Don't get me wrong, we do have a few planes. Uh, we can see here. So overall, I mean, it's not terrible, but it just it wasn't fun. That's all. And it was cool and getting these guys down with us too, but you know whatever. We did change the flag. Oh, we need to integrate these guys too. We need more compliance. Um, but you know it is what it is. Uh, Jalama's here. So, <clears throat> cold personality. To make sure Ungun Sternberg remains in power, the propaganda around his cold personality should be temporarily increased massively. The cold pers this cold personality relies on myth making that officer Ostendowski is adept at spinning. <coughs> Full allegiance to Ungun. The people must be taught that they do not have a choice in serving Ungarn Sternberg. The state and the Baron must come first in life and everything they should do to help the state survive and thrive. Encourage myths and legends. Uh, Mongolia still believes that much... Most Mongolians still believe much folklore myths about history and current life. Many people even believe that Ungarn Sternberg would be the reincarnation of Jam Saran, the god of war. Though we may not be state leader directly confirm these myths, we should secretly encourage these myths across the nation so that people continue to fear the Baron. I don't know why this is still here. We don't have army reform. It was a ching, thank God. Um, yeah, I don't know. If I ever, if I ever, 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 ever do this again, I definitely got to make sure that we set it up so that it's just, it's just better. The search expands. <clears throat> the cap, your Captain Berg now dead and buried, or the lead dead and buried. Uh, we've exhausted the one lead as per the location of Grand Duke Michael. With this in mind, Regent Sternberg has ordered his top officers to search every nook and cranny of the Empire to find either proof of the Grand Duke's death or the Grand Duke himself. With the vastness of Russia being what it is, these men have been given top-level access to what little we have to do, or little we do about the Grand Duke's movements during the course of the Civil War. While this method will no doubt take much longer than hope, it may be just one way we can know for certain the fate of Grand Duke Michael Alexandrovich. Godspeed, gentlemen, you carry the hopes of an empire with you. <clears throat> but yeah, this has been god-awful. Nothing but saying that with a smile on my face. Like, not much to do with the political power, too. Fall of Rome. Yeah, I mean, Germany is just incredibly annoying. They should not get involved in Mongolian affairs. Uh, so we did all these ones. Sort of mili militarization at any cost. Uh, with the lofty ambitions of Ungern's goal, we need to dedicate the entire industrial apparatus of the state towards the military production. Say what few sectors are needed to provide a sustainable existence for people. We'll turn the skies over the city like uh, Ugra and Kov back Black with the smog of progress as the factors that will fuel our victory spring, spring to life. Oh, and now it's looking extremely hard because China's got to capitulate. Maybe no, okay, maybe not China. How about I just go in and just kill them all off? Thank God it's over because I just want I just want at this point I just want fish focuses. Focuses are more sometimes just more fun than fighting definitely fighting a lot more in HSO. Um I think with all these we'll just give it to the reform government of China. They did really well. I really do not like that you can't just give them like these people all this territory at one time. And that's just a paradox thing. Uh, there you go. Uh, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. Finally, peace can be secured. Cool. I, I honestly don't care at this point. Um, and this whole war with the Entente was just... Why? Why? I, I don't want to get involved. It's just not fun. And I, I did cheat also to annex the Prince of Federation. Because they just went to war with us. I, I, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing this. So... Let's come over here and do that. And do the best you can. So, I, I'm, I'm pretty much done with this campaign. So, propaganda in the cities. I'll just read a bunch of these focuses because I'm done. <clears throat> and Dorsa Holy Trinity Church of Urga. <clears throat> 
In order to prepare the people of Mongolia for further interactions with Russia in preparation for inevitable triumph, we must spread the only other true faith on earth besides Buddhism, Russian Orthodoxy. These two religions are side, two sides of the same coin, preaching the same ideals to two different yet kindred peoples. By endorsing the largest Orthodox parish in the nation and allowing them more churches to be built around Mongolia, we spread the faith as we spread Buddhism as well. Buddhist fanaticism. Buddhism is the preferred faith of our barren and most of our population for its righteous and pure faith that is undeniable in its truth and benefits across the steppe. Fanaticism and zealotry for the Buddhist faith have exploded as many fuel as those this righteous faith is beset by external forces. What's happened is primal rage to channel it uh, into useful avenues, for Buddhism is one of the two true faiths, and all these are heretical filth. The two cons of Urga. Baron Ungern Steinberg and the Bog Khan have long been close friends and allies, with the spiritual leader serving as Ungern's guide as he has delved further into the Buddhist faith. Together they form a diarchy as the two most powerful and revered men of Mongolia, and with their cooperation, all Mongolia will be made to prosper. Herald of the True Tsar. <clears throat> the Baron of Staunch Monarch is by all standards, following the will of his friend and mentor, the Bog Khan, who here while championing the crusade of the missing but rightful heir to the Romanov throne, the Grand Duke Michael Alexandrovich. Though the true son of Russia has not been seen in over a decade, the Baron still holds hope that he shall uh, return to lead Russia to greatness. In his absence, the Baron is his regent and the herald of the purity of Russian monarchism, and authentically, Mongolian currency. <clears throat> to find that's an necessary exp expansion, Mongolia's economy and industry will need to fuel Ungern's battle lust. The Baron's advised an ingenious monetary scheme by creating new currency to tie to the per personal herds of livestock of Mongolia's various farmers, estates, and shepherds, which will ensure a reliable weight behind this hopefully functional currency for Mongolia's economy to expand with. In a system, a sheep would be worth 10 notes, a cow 25, horse 50, and camel 100. Nicknamed Barons after Ungern himself, these notes shall be building blocks for the new Mongolian financial sector. If you only about to strike at the Cossacks, please go ahead. <clears throat> the Iron Veins of Mongolia. The trans siberian Railway is the lifeblood of Mongolia, connecting us to the water world and allowing much-needed supplies to flow into the lands. We must expand this line to a sprawling network of rail lines, or rail, extending across the steppe in all of Mongolia, which will drag Mongolia into the modern age with the power of the Iron Horse, <clears throat> the Bandit King. Through his time as a raider and bandit that rampage across the steppe, Baron Ungern Sternberg has developed close ties and reliable, reliable contacts with numerous bandit groups and warlords across Mongolia. By cashing in on the past debts or paying with new bribes, the Baron shall earn the aid of these new brigands to prepare for a final conquest of nomadic allies. <clears throat> The Baron's long held close ties with various Mongolian groups of nomads, steppe riders, and other traditional Mongolian groups that still adhere to the pastoralist ideal. By sure to protect its lifestyles, the rest of the world modernizes around them, we shall sway these forces to join us in the coming crusade and pan Asian supremacism. Through a Baltic German, though Baltic German by blood and raised as a Russian, Baron uh, Ungern Sternberg is true to all the pan Asian cause, detesting anti Asian hate and along promoting Asian supremacist views, <clears throat> seeing himself as an honorary Mongolian. Ungern wishes to spread these ideals across all of Mongolia and eventually all of Russia. The town of the pompous west of the Dominus is over, for the sun is rising once more in the east. And the legend lives on. <coughs> Baron Ungern Sternberg will never die. He controls the state and his estate. He, those who have not realized this yet must be put to the gallows. If you're wondering about these, please go ahead, because I'm not going to read these, because these are pretty generic. Uh, tactical bomber, strategic stuff, so. Pursuit fighter development. Fighter focus. A long range fighter focus. We've got one. Improve air bases in Mongolia, which is honestly a giant waste. This one's a waste. For four air bases, that's a waste. Uh, there's that one too. Uh, roads across the west. Develop the Xinjiang region. Roads across the east. Found the Zai B industrial base and develop Chinese industry. Looks pretty good. That's focus not even done. And then we're going to route reclaim Persia. Our empire is still vast. It's true. Uh, still, wherever we go, we must conquer. Uh, purchasing is right for the taking. <clears throat> Destroy legation cities. Oh, the legation cities have sat there, squatting on this coast as a reminder of foreign powers for many years. We shall see them from, from Mongolia. Uh, military propaganda. Society of Mongolia must be completely and utterly committed to their military we to survive against their enemies. We stand alone. The Mongolian people have been abandoned by our allies and trapped in by our enemies. <clears throat> Though we stand alone on the world stage, we must fight eternally for independence. I apologize for my coughing as well. If you want to buy this one too, please go ahead. But prepare for Eshaton. <clears throat> Eshaton, the end times, is nearly upon us. And must be ready for it. See, we shall face our final battle and descend into the Russian homelands, fighting tooth and nail for destiny. We have a cut down for that one. We must not cease at a crusade, for our cause righteous and Russia will be ours and claim the Russian mantle. <clears throat> We must drive from Moscow and claim our rightful positions as the lords of Russia, not since the Russian Civil War has their liege been in the hands of, lands of his people, but that soon shall change. We shall pour into eastern Siberia and across the Urals until all of Russia is in grasp, which Mongolia is way too weak to do any of this stuff. It's way, 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 way too weak. Unless you're playing the actual, like, crazy Genghis Khan on the second path and go nuts, and then you might be able to do it, maybe, because you get way more attack and defense with cavalry, but right now, Mongolia is too weak. I've uh, learned about these ones, please go right ahead. I've heard these before, because script the conquered peoples. Which these are pretty fairly strong, but you know, not that. I mean, the two percent more map is very strong, and the non-core map is very good as well. But <clears throat> and I apologize for my throat. I don't know what's wrong with my throat this episode, but this has just been one heck of a I don't know, maybe bad episode. It's just not been fun. Like I said, it's just not fun. Um, who are we, who are the, 
bad word are we? Oh my god. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're using. We're going to use straight cons commands here. Um, focus. Uh, no checks. There's a problem with the Kaiser Redux. It's not the death fault. It's just things just go crazy. If you want to be listening to, please go ahead. Um, do we miss any more? Uh, Establish Ilkhanate. That's fine. Alliance. No. Yeah, we got one. Doesn't matter. Industrializing Russia. With all of Russia under rule, we can work on recovering from the tolerable civil war. Those include territories we may have to go to war to acquire. Reclaiming our lands. Now that we are Russian, we must collect our former lands from the towns that rule in Central Europe. Nice. So if we want to read these, please go right ahead. I'm not I'm done with this campaign, so. As much as I want to play these, or you know, do this stuff, it just it's been so grindy. And Mongolia has been a in this episode or this campaign basically if we weren't cheating we'd lose and at, i'm not going to recover from something like that so question of don kaban union now oh, it's been allowed to play uh, politics for long enough for the position uh is legitimate russian government undeniable with sound demand the reintegration demand the surrender remember that was great ed that one georgia question two our uh, claim eastern europe bring rich finland to its knees invade white russia resolve the ukrainian problem at the end time for the reich reclaim central poland professor abia force open the straits uh, North Iran, get rid of India, and Indian policy. So, there's a lot of stuff. Hey, if you want to hear about that one too, please go ahead. It's fine. Whatever. At this point, I'm done. So, I've done that before, but whatever. So, I apologize for being kind of disappointing in this episode. Uh, it just it, it just was not fun. Just straight up not fun. Getting attacked on like seven different sides. Never fun. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow in the campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.